This session is very interesting because in this session, uh, I have managed to get a very experienced person who has a great experience in uh, big data and data engineering. And uh, somehow uh, when I shared uh, the common doubts that you guys shared with me on this platform, uh, he was very keen and interested in sharing his insights uh, on uh, your uh, specific uh, doubts ranging from uh, should you move to big data uh, based upon your experiences as well are you a fresher you are a mid-level uh, experienced four to five years even for 10 plus years of experience he uh, almost has uh, 10 plus years of experience so uh, he has the solution for every one of you so uh, we had a little discussion and uh, that is what I wanted to share as a part of this video and it will answer most of your queries uh, along with um, uh, which programming language you should use and uh, how cloud is important how much of that is important like uh, uh, everyone is moving towards cloud uh, what a uh, career path you should choose so every uh, little detail I have tried to uh, uh, get the idea from him and all of your doubts uh, be it a very little or uh, be it a massive one like you are 10 plus years of experience but still you want to move to big data what he has to say uh, every detail uh, I have tried to ask and even he has explained in very elaborate manner and uh, although I will be providing uh, the uh, timestamp for each uh, instance or each important um, uh, phase what we have asked but I would request you that uh, watch this video uh, from uh, zero till end because uh, you never know right now you are less experienced and today or tomorrow uh, you get a great experience but still uh, if any doubt uh, you have or maybe that will give a better career path even you move to big data so let's jump uh, right to the discussion and uh, i hope you will like it if you still have any question just feel free to uh, share your thoughts in the comment section below and i'm sure this video will be very helpful to every one of you <music> Hi Bandhu, uh, welcome to GK Code Labs and thanks for joining uh, and uh, giving your precious time to GK Code Labs. I hope uh, me and our GK Code Labs community will have a lot of takeaway from this video and your great experience in data engineering. I know you well, but uh, anyways, uh, can you give a small intro about yourself? Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks a bit for calling me on this on this platform. I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. I, I see your uh, GK Labs. I follow that whenever I get time. I hope uh, that we can give some useful input to our listeners. So, uh, yeah. So, talking about my experience. So, I have a uh, rich experience in the big data, in the big data uh, school stacks. So, I have worked around, uh, I have total years of seven, 10 years of experience. And uh, I have worked around 7 plus years on big data. And uh, I started my journey while with the, with the uh, monetization projects where we basically, uh, uh, that is, that is the, I think when the big data gets started, when the people have started realizing that they are, they, their existing models, their existing uh, data sets are getting used and they are processing and the transformations are taking quite long time and the cost is also quite high. And that's where I think people have started moving to the uh, open source code, and that's and that's the few the, the the first project which we have handed. So where we have done the data modernization. So uh, after that, I think a uh, couple of data modernization projects I handled, which I moved into big data. Then I think the era of cloud started, where people have already realized that uh, on premise is a bit more costly and and. The availability is also sometimes a problem. So that's where I think uh, now the clients have realized it and they are moving it to the cloud. So I have handled a few of the cloud projects as well. So uh, my major expertise is on the data engineering. Okay. And uh, I have worked on several technologies, including Spark, Big Data, MapRT. Starting was we did with Big and Hype, if you remember, I think six or seven years back. 
so that is my total experience and i work on different uh, different domains like telecom retail and uh, power and utilities so energy so i have exposed to all those so i think that's i i'll try to put up whatever we can uh, to our listeners thank you that's great that's great and that Uh, great about you and your experience as well uh, we have we are here to discuss about um, what all i have seen uh, connecting with my uh, subscribers so i thought of why not use uh, this session in um, what i have estimated as the very frequently asked question or very frequently uh, uh, the uh, the domain of doubt that uh, much wider uh, audience has specifically for me that is my main content is on big data and data engineering so i thought like uh, who better than you can uh, throw some lights on uh, those particular doubts so let's use this session mm. and let's see what uh, um, uh, we uh, can provide on uh, these particular doubts so uh, bandhu actually uh, uh, first doubt as a beginner uh, mostly what people uh why this big data or data engineering comes to anyone's mind is uh, first of all this is a, a hype word in it so uh, they try to uh, see and very much uh, competition that is that is that this domain is getting is from data science so obviously people try to see what is the difference and all and i i hope like uh, all the definitions are already there but uh, uh, according to you like for an, for your experience like because you have actually worked on de as well uh, what you can say that uh, this is data engineering yeah i think that's a that's a very good question and as a fresher when you start so i'll i'll go back to my times when i started as a fresher so i had never heard of the term as data engineer i only know there is a software engineer mm-hmm. so that's a that's a transition that has happened uh, through this 10 years and i'll tell you this is an evolution okay so how this software engineer role is being evolved to data engineer i would not say that software they are not software engineer as of now the case they are but now with the the, uh, the requirements are very specific about data engineering so i would tell, uh, i would tell you that how this evaluation is done so earlier when we started we know that we have i will talk about the on premises uh distribution so there were three distributions like when we started like cloud era map produce mm-hmm. and the modern box so the and the target was basically to move over uh, legacy systems to these platform and then those platform and once we load those uh, then basically the reporting is done on top of it so that was the basic transformation and that could, you can call it as elt transformation Okay, or a ETL transfer, not ETL, but the ETL transformation, because we are extracting the data, we are transforming it, mm-hmm. and then we are loading it finally in a database. So you can say that we are, if on the source end, source end, you can have n type of different types of databases, and now you want to or data sources, I would say, and then you have to load the data into this into a final SQL uh, database or a MySQL or any any could be, and then you basically what you do is you. in just the data you do some transformation on top of it and then you finally load the data into a suppose a sql platform again okay and now what uh, the power bi reports or whatever the uh, the coding tool you are using you will be direct over there but that was looking fine but slowly i think the clients have realized that now what they were using what they were doing there was a bit of lag because now the traditional data the, the the sql servers which we are using the databases which we are using are not able to handle the uh, diversity of the data and also the volume of the data and now they have started moving into the data warehouse right so now the the initial process which you have heard of creating the etl pipeline now that has been changed into i would say a data lake mm-hmm. okay so when we say a data lake so that means that we are basically ingesting a whole lot of data a pool of data from different sources and keeping keeping as it is i can say a raw data on the uh, on one platform okay and then that's our loading part so we we ingest it extract the data load the data and then do the transformation after it so that is the elt process 
and the main reason for doing it is the first season i told you that uh, the the uh, the data size was so so high that you cannot load each and everything into a into a uh, database that's why we are bringing that and bringing the flat files and keeping that it as a data pool okay now the other reason because without is was the right hand side of your data engineering that is the data scientist which come into play right so data scientist actually needs a lot of they have a, i would say a, a more mature role in order to deal with the data to not to understand the data and how the relevant information can be extracted from the data and supplied to the leaders where they can look into the kpis where they can have data scientists to extract and to basically get uh, some running some machine models on top of it but they need the quality data right so now the approach of the client or the data engineer is to serve those uh, data scientists whatever they want now that's why we kept we move this transform part in from the middle to the right hand side so mm -hmm. that whatever they want we can they can tell the, tell us and based on that we can use the data which we have already loaded and on top of it we can transform it okay mm -hmm. and then those transform it transform data can be used in any of the dimensional models or it can be used in any of the uh, models which they want and then a, a more meaningful kpi can be driven from it so that is how the evaluation is done so uh, that is i think that is a whole logic behind uh, getting this data engineering and why this is important that is i think that, that I, i hope that answers you yes yes that perfectly answered and uh, very insightful and even in my experience i see now like everything you have already answered but uh, this uh, data engineering now i see these days uh if you see or mostly all the certifications you do it for gcp azure they at least a small part towards the model building or towards the uh, they are taking as close as to so that one uh, data engineer can understand the need why i am preparing this data so i think in every um, uh, data engineering requirement uh, it has uh, maybe now uh, it's a small essence of uh, in every uh, certification but maybe uh, that's my thought like maybe in future more of data science stuff can be expected from a data engineer as well uh, to understand like, uh, how are yes, we preparing yes i i agree with that up to some extent but i would say uh, data engineering role will have a worth later itself mm -hmm. okay and it would be an add on if you know the data engineering part and a uh, data uh, where you said the data scientist part or the, or you can say as a machine learning algorithm mm -hmm. if you know uh, more insights about ai or machine learning that will be definitely an add on but they are two different streams yes right? correct so whoever is starting their career i think that is a two, two different streams you need to decide that what is stream into you, you need to choose based on your interest so i think that that's what that's what i want to do Awesome. Okay. Few people ask me this. Uh, also, I think this is the need of the hour because uh, we are all uh, already in 2021, and uh, India is uh, moving digital already. And uh, the trend these days, I'm seeing, uh, the world is seeing, uh, there is a, a very prevailing culture of startups. So uh, mostly college power pass outs. uh that i have been in touch these uh, uh, recent times uh they are trying and they are uh, they have very great ideas of building something new making a world a better place uh, so they want to uh, make some product which is uh great for uh, public and very interestingly uh, different because almost everything we have uh, in these times so uh, how uh, for for such people uh, how data engineering or big data can be inspiring if, if they want like if they see data engineering as a career option can they still fulfill their dreams of uh, starting up something new and amazing any thoughts on that patu so yeah but i think uh, 
what I understand is that firstly, uh, as being a startup, or if you are if you are willing to go for a startup, or if you are starting it up in a data engineering uh, career, so first of all, there are a lot of opportunities. Okay. Uh, when I say a lot of opportunities, it, it uh, and there are a lot of and the plus point for the upcoming generation or upcoming freshers which are which are just passed out from college or which are in their third years and they want and they are and they are interested in to build their career in data engineering. There are a lot of things that are very easily accessible. Okay, that were not back ten years back. Okay, so I would say that. First, as I said, that there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, opportunities, and secondly, how to start with. So, firstly, we have to as as in the colleges, we usually uh, start with our basics, which we uh, start from our data structures, correct? And then we started our some of the which are from the CS background. They start with the SQL uh, database. Uh, then it comes to their. I have friends with so that just recollecting what subjects they have. But they are more from the uh, I think computer networks and all. So basically, uh, data meta like these are the these are the these are the different uh, different uh, different subjects which they teach. So that which they teach and which they learn. So that is something I think that is really good. That is build that builds their base for data engineering. But majorly, I would say it's a hands on. Okay. So now in terms of the hands on, we have to realize that which are the common languages which are currently being used. And did they interest you or not? Okay. So, like someone is more interested to do C, C, C plus plus, right? Mm -hmm. Someone is more interested to do is is interested to go for a Python first course. They consider that Python is quite easy to understand and learn and quickly write some uh, mm -hmm. some meaningful code, right? So, <clears throat> I would say language is not a foundation. Okay. Data engineering. Yes, I would say now there is a bit of bit of difference you have to understand. Like for C, C plus plus these languages, or I would say Java as well. What my experience is, these languages, if we are not including these languages as part of big data, these are languages which are used mainly in the product based companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, where we are building the frameworks and getting something and, and building a product basically where because that is more important. Because that product and the scalability and the product quality, everything is more important from the day one, right? right? But when we talk about data engineering, okay, there are different insights. There are different types of roles, and depends on which of the firm or company you get associated with. Mm -hmm. So there are different type of roles where you have to basically quickly access the data. Mm -hmm. And provide the data to the data scientist, and on top of they provide some, uh, they provide some uh, logics, and uh, they, they highlight some of the issues in the existing system, mm -hmm. hidden issues which were not highlighted before, <coughs> and then they provide those input to the client. That is, I'm talking of the consulting firms, which are pure consulting, mm -hmm. okay, not the solution plus consulting, but the pure consulting as an example, as intensive. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a this is a pure consulting, okay. So in these firms, the uh, focus is basically to get the data ready for your data scientist. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in that sense, I think Python. I would say that is very a good language to start with. Okay, mm -hmm. if and because and reason being is that it is a one source languages for your uh, data uh, for your for your uh, data transformations or your for building your data for doing all the data engineering work. Secondly, it has libraries supported for all the ML work, mm -hmm. right? And it and thirdly, it is quite easy because these libraries are just plug and play. They have very uh, user friendly methods right. which can be used. Mm -hmm. But yes, as I said in the first, if you have interest in Python or so, then this is the best way to go ahead. Although there are different languages for for doing your like R is there which you can use for uh, data scientists and all, but. I would personally, what I feel is that Python is much more easier, and I see that uh, freshers do usually learn it, learn it, and love it, and the starting itself. So <clears throat> that is, I think, one language which freshers should look on and should. And if 
from the, if I am if I am the third year or I am the fourth year and I am looking for the job, I have next year I have to apply. First thing you have to focus on the data structures. Mm-hmm. Second thing you have to choose one language. Either use Java or use Python mm-hmm. or use Scala. Mm-hmm. That is also a language. These are the three languages in which you can basically excel. Mm-hmm. And if you are good in that, then I think there are a lot of opportunities. And fourth and the most important is SQL. So SQL is never left behind. Okay, yeah. so no, no, nothing can exceed SQL. Instead, you if you might already be knowing any Spark. Also, we use Spark SQL, which is nothing but the pure SQL which we were using earlier mm-hmm. with some add-ons based on the memory optimization. But yes, mm-hmm. it is that. So I think if you focus on these three or four things, I think uh, you are on the right track. Mm-hmm. Great, uh, great, Bandhu. Very nice advice for uh, uh, freshers, I would say. But uh, there are actually, uh, in my opinion, there are three uh, different categories based upon their uh, experienced years. So uh, for freshers, uh, we have already discussed. But let's say for um, mid experience, let's say four or five years of experience, um, uh, people who have worked in IT, they have good idea, but uh, not specifically on uh, big data or data engineering. They want to move uh, into big data with uh, very less or no experience. So should they first of all, if uh, they are um, doing well in whatever uh, technology is fine, uh, what should be the reason they should be move, trying to move to big data and uh, what things uh, they should be prepared before, before mo- moving into a uh, big data project. There is another category for more experience, 10 plus years, uh, but uh, let's take it after this one. So yeah, around so, four or five uh, years. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a very common question. And I think that's, uh, uh, I think I understand that listeners would be having that doubt. <coughs> hmm. So, <coughs> sorry. So I think there are two categories, okay. In the four and five years experience also. Okay? Mm-hmm. So the two categories are the, First category is the folks who have already worked on any of the programming languages earlier. Mm-hmm. And the second category is who is coming from the ETL background. Who Correct. are more yes. Yes. focused on the SQL mm-hmm. part, but never has done any, pro- have, never has any programming experience. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So I would take the first category first, where we are having the uh, folks who have worked on the programming. Mm-hmm. But that is a uh, quite add on, I would say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because they actually know how how the functional or the uh, uh, how what are the OOPs concepts. So basically, they have some idea mm-hmm. that how we basically write a program, right? How a basic functionality of <clears throat> you can say a summation, a very very basic program, how it actually works. Mm-hmm. Because they have uh, they have not done it with relative to the big data but they have ex- exposure on the programming part, mm. right? So with that category, I would say, first of all, guys, if you want to move into big data, that's, I would say, thumbs up. That's a very good option to go ahead. But you have to also think that why you want to move to big data, okay. right? Because the one reason could be you want to make a job shift because there are more opportunities for big data uh, this time, agreed. That could be a reason. The second thing is that you are bored of your technology and now you want to shift your technology and, 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 and do that. So that and the other, uh, third thing is that you are more interested and wanted to build your career more into the ML part. But before going to the ML part, you want to step to the big data. That is the first step that we want to take, right? So these three steps, these three reasons are very valid things. Mm-hmm. And if you are, if you are having the same thing, uh, same reason to move, I think, yes, you should do it and it will be very easy for you to move because now, <clears throat> suppose you are from the, uh, Java background. Most of my, I, I remember that when I was doing it, my friends that moved, moved into big data are from the Java background. So for them, it's quite easy because at that time it was map reduce and all, and it was very similar to the OOPS. It is, it is based on the OOPS concept only, mm-hmm. right? So it was very easy on that part. And uh, uh, currently, if you want to move, Scala is the first thing you can go ahead because again, it's an old school, it's based on the old concept only, and you'll find 
uh, very, uh, quite things very uh, which are very similar in 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 Scala and and also and also if you are from the Java background, yes, Spice, uh, Spark also supports Java APIs. Uh, you can also uh, do Spark coding in Java, so that is also an add-on. As we are discussing, uh, sorry to interrupt, as we are discussing the same thing, uh, so for this category, like uh, what should they choose first for Scala or Java, uh, if they already know, I am sure they should not start with Java, but uh, if they already know, shall they, uh, can they continue and uh, or what should they choose, Scala and uh, Scala or Python for this category? If they already, if they already know, I would say go for Scala. Scala, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. because Python I believe is quite easy. Okay, mm -hmm. and it will not take much time if you have concept. Because see, in PySpark when we in Spark when we code, okay, so Spark has some core APIs. Mm -hmm. Okay, which when you use those Spark API APIs, it is very similar in Scala and in Python. Mm -hmm. I think you already know that because you have a similar background. Right? Mm -hmm. So you, the Python APIs, uh, the Spark APIs are very similar. Okay? Yes, correct. The core APIs. The Spark uh, data frame APIs are also very very similar as compared to Scala mm. and as compared to Python. So it will not matter much. Mm. But since you have already have a backup background of using the object oriented language, it will be more easy for you to uh, conquer the Scala part because that is a bit difficult part. And then you move on to Python whenever the I think once you get into a project, I think it is it is Python or something yeah. you can easily absorb it. So that is, that will not be an issue. Absorbing a Scala is a bit tricky as yeah. compared to Python. And syntactically as well, I would say like uh, if you learn Scala, Python is already easy, but it becomes way easier if, if you know Scala That's specifically. Correct. Yeah. That's, correct. Yeah. That's correct. So I told you the first category. The second category is where the people are from the SQL value, yeah. right? <laughs> For SQL background, I think uh, you need to work a bit harder first of all and you have to i think you do not i think the add-on is that you know sql okay <clears throat> so anytime you are stuck with this spark core apis you can work with you get a workaround to the spark sql hmm. okay it is just that you have to get an understanding of the apis or the functions which are exposed in spark to help with your to help or basically to decode your SQL into the core API code. Hmm, okay. okay. So for that, I think you should start with Python. And once you start with Python, hmm. slowly and gradually you will be going to the spice part <clears throat> and then you will realize that how things, how all the operations, all the aggregate operations, all the vendoring operations, whatever you're doing in SQL is very similar. Hmm. Okay. The most Tricky part here is, but I tell you, <clears throat> once I have seen because I am I am taking interviews continuously for the last uh, five years, and I know I I face people who have come from this background, showing some big experience, mm -hmm. two or three years experience, saying that they have experience, but they are I know they are fresher. <clears throat> Why that happens is guys because once you learn this, right? Only learning will not help in will not help in Spark, mm. Spark, okay, or getting into the Spark. You have to do a hands-on with a larger data set, okay. That is the key thing, mm. okay. Because I would, if any, if anyone asks me that is Python difficult or is Spark difficult, I would say no. So mm. what is Spark's coding is different? I would say no. <clears throat> the most trickiest part in Spark is the memory optimization, Correct. and that you will learn. Once you work on these, once, what, when you get stuck on the issues, okay. when you see the issues, life. <clears throat> right. Okay. So as a fresher who does who, who don't have the exposure, on, who doesn't have the opportunity to work on the performance optimization, memory optimization, I would say, first of all, read the articles. Okay. Then you would have the best, the best option is to either get a data set, hmm. which is quite heavy and then try to run complex queries on top of it and see what issues you are getting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. If I would if I would be a fresher at this time, I would say <clears throat> cloud is the best way to do it. Correct. You have the free data set available ranging up to TVs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have and every cloud give you at least a one month subs free subscription 
to do do that mm-hmm. okay if and not subscription I think, then i think they give some 3 200 300 dollars of free credit which can be yeah used. that that's correct and that's, that's correct. more yeah, than think, enough to set up yeah. like let's say 5 10 node of cluster and simply you can yes and kaggle can be a good resource for data sets it has good data data right. data set that that's correct that's correct and in fact i think uh, azure i would say azure mm. already provide you a uh, lot of data sets from i mean they have uh, now they have provide they have started providing the data sets as a service <coughs> you can directly import those data sets okay. and there are a lot of there are heavy heavy data sets there which you can directly import from there mm. you do not so there's a they have a, a basically it is nothing but a rest it but the api with the call to ingest the data but of they course. have that everything available there you just need to drop and click and you get it because don't get waste waste time in at just in creating a cluster and in mm. getting the uh, data sets i think if it is easily available in cloud then you should use it yeah. <clears throat> and then once you get that then apply all the understanding which you have mm. okay in to those clusters and see what issues you get how you debug those issues what is the use of spark ui i think once you do that mm. get into the details get into the details how it is how the job is running what is the running in the backlog how mm. the logs are printing how the executor memory driver memory or how all these things matter in your job once mm. you once you understand that i think you are you will be very easy to track to first of all crack these interviews as well as to work in your projects efficiently good good advice so that is i think the yeah that is a key thing for the folks who are in sql background want to move into the uh, mm. spark mm. good advice so that like maybe for starting couple of month they can try coding in intellij and just basic uh, snippets but once they have some confidence they should surely go for uh, one month of one month of practice on any distributed cluster and a heavy data set correct correct uh, great great so vandu uh, the another category uh, very critical one for which even um, if people ask me and even uh, i don't have that much experience to answer but uh, still whatever i have seen that is the category of uh, 10 plus years where uh, again uh, they, they they these category is very experienced obviously and uh, mostly is in uh, etl close to etl or sql the rdbms background uh, that is why because that much of experience on being on this uh, this uh, domain only then uh, they try to move to big data but the issue here uh, when i have to answer this uh, is that even i don't have 10 plus years of experience so what i can answer but uh, another thing is after 10 or 12 years of experience i can suggest the developer profile but for 10 or 12 plus years is the developer profile appropriate for anyone so that is where somewhere i'm lacking but uh, what do you think uh, should a person move after 10 years of experience if he should move what actually thing he should focus on yeah i think i also i mean i can correlate with the folks who have that much experience because in my past i have uh, when i used to uh, teach uh, a big data at that time i have in a group of uh, 10 folks i have four folks who are 15 years of experience mm-hmm. and they want to make the career in the big data because at that time i think it was quite new <clears throat> so what i would say is firstly the first question which you ask should they move i would say guys if you are ready to take challenge if you are ready to work hard hardest then think of moving into big data otherwise you will be stuck in between okay so if you are ready to take that challenge if you think that you can do it and in terms of because there will be a lot of things that you have to do okay first thing is i consider that you have already make up your mind and you want to move it the first thing you have to do is you have to start from basics <clears throat> okay we all see and it's a guy having a 10 plus years of experience would not be doing all of the coding by himself right I think he would be currently plays playing a manager role or a tech lead role or a senior manager role if it is more than 15 years, right? They would know how the project runs. Mm-hmm. They would know that how the how I have to manage the team. 
and how what how I have to estimate it. Are those estimates correct or not? That is they don't know because they don't know what efforts it would take to do that thing, mm-hmm. correct? And that's where I I felt that people want to know big data because they want to understand that what actually what efforts been being put into that mm-hmm. because that would help for help in their effort estimations that would help to understand it and and while in a technical discussions with client that is their main goal right so for that i would say you have to start from scratch scratch in the sense you have to start from the big data basics considering i will take the tougher tougher section which is mainly coming from the sql background <clears throat> first of all you have to start from the basics which is what is hadoop and what is big data mm. what we say what we call it as what was map reduce which was left 5 years back but you have to understand it what was map reduce okay then slowly and gradually you have to come to spark spark as i would i always say spark is the second level guys don't jump into spark from the day one first of all don't leave the basics behind you have to understand what is hdf is how is yarn managing what was job tracker task tracker doing at that time how it has evolved evolved during the time and that if you go through that come through that history then you will be able to first of all relate things that okay now that was done now spark has to place now how how the task tracker job trackers and the uh, master and slaves been replaced by or reevaluated and put it into the executors and workers in in spark how it has been done then you will understand it and mm-hmm. you would also also do a hands on practice only theory will not get you anywhere mm-hmm. what i what i trust theory would not get you anywhere you have to do a, some hands on practice i would not say much mm-hmm. but some hands on practice secondly when you do that for and, and this is not a this is not a one month thing okay it will take i mean if i if i would what i used to suggest my uh, students at that time that it is at least a 6 to 8 months of work that you have to do hmm. right because you are bridging that gap which which you want to bring which you want to uh, come up with with the at the same level which are currently having 6 8 years or, or 10 years of experience in building and all right mm-hmm. <clears throat> so for that you, you have to spend at least eight six to eight months. So in that t- time frame, first of all, what I said is basics. Second, you have to move and see, and along with your projects, whatever you are doing, you have to get involved into small projects or POCs, mm-hmm. right? Then the second way is to not get more. First, you get understanding of the of the understanding. First, you have understanding. You did some POCs. You know what how things are working. Python is your way, guys. First thing. don't get involved into java or something if you have not done earlier go with python now second way to do is to don't get much involved into hardcore coding instead uh learn any of the cloud okay mm-hmm. because cloud okay. is a uh, is the future now right and if you are doing it then the best way would be to see that in cloud what would be uh, the, all the services are already been provided and you can easily plug and play and then like suppose you learn python you learn spark right and then you say that i have to do it and uh, see that how it is working guys try it on databricks <clears throat> okay so once you do it on databricks either you directly do on the databricks is a free version available or the best way would be to to go for azure <clears throat> or any of the cloud like if you want to go for gcp go for data pro If you want to do AWS, there are different different clusters they provide as a, as a free service. Do it on that and see that how you are how these are working, and then slightly go into the pipeline mode. That mm-hmm. how you are building that data lake. Then you ingest some data set. Then you do some whatever you are doing the transformation. You do those transformations mm-hmm. and see that finally how the data is written, how the data, and see the multiple types of data set what what we are dealing with. And this is the second step. the third and the last step is you have to learn ml on top of it because at your level i think now we are now we are talking where we was when you start doing it the time would have already passed that and now like you and me are talking about big data mm. i think down the line 2 years down the line the time has already come. i think it is it is on its way where we are will be talking like this on the ml and ml yes right? right because that will be too common then right mm. so it's the right time once you do that then you have to see that what other different what how basically ml and ai cognitive services 
these could be incorporated with in your in your solution and how you can do it uh, what i am saying is use these services why because if you go on the other part where you have to do ml and understand each of the model from the scratch it would be very complex for you to do that mm. so it is better to see that how any of the cloud services are using this cloud because there the models are already built in right? right so you can directly plug and play and you, you just need to know how to use it because every of the model every of the uh, like nlp uh, uh, set, uh, sentiment analysis mm. or, or any of the any of the model which are using they have their apis already exposed in in your, in all of these clouds okay you know you should know how to use it i think once you do all these three steps in 6 to 8 months or whatever your bandwidth allows i think that should be a good you should be in a good state to basically work at your level to understand things to uh talk to make to talk something which makes sense and and i think slowly and gradually once you do that and i would say do a side project along with the project which you are already doing to get you to get to spend some sleepless nights thinking about these issues and then only you will run and that is i think that is one thing which i believe till you don't spend sleepless nights you will not learn that yeah. applies for managers or any anyone who is 10 year 10 plus year everyone it is applies so you have to spend time good time in spark specifically mm. dealing with the memory issues memory issues are very much very much time taking issues which and you have to give that time you have to respect that then only you will learn so that's i think my my perspective of uh, about this great great very very helpful insight one uh, one question bandhu even i am interested uh, knowing the answer for is that as we are moving to cloud everything is uh, moving to cloud um mm-hmm. it is the doubt in many people's mind that uh, should we now uh, go so much deep in uh, coding uh, being a data engineer or expecting our full future in data engineering uh, learning spark into very depths of it and uh, learning uh, sql in uh, in the most uh, detailed way uh, is it uh, important or uh, will all this uh, deprecate Uh, being the cloud services being so advanced and the optimized as well so uh, how do you see uh, will these efforts go away and uh, or uh, it's uh, still uh, worth learning spark specifically yeah yeah so see i would say these are first of all processing or transformation <coughs> can't be 100% automated okay so when we say that these there are services available the services provides provides you an interface where you can basically do either you can use it directly but 99.99 projects doesn't directly use those services they always do some custom configurations or some custom changes according to the according to their need mm-hmm. and that's when and when that's the case would definitely lead some processing uh, uh understanding some processing knowledge to do that <clears throat> and mm-hmm. that's where spark comes into picture okay so is spark will never lose its i don't think that spark would ever lose its uh, importance even in the even we are modernizing the projects until i mean depends on the project on the project uh, project to project basis as well if there is any project which is currently running on etl for example mm-hmm. and in using any etl tool they want to move into cloud using an etl tool definitely there is no as such there is no uh, uh, use of building a, a spark cluster and then doing it that because there is no need but mm. sql will definitely come into picture because whatever you are doing either you are using uh, because all the data warehouses which are used like either you got uh, either you uh, talk about azure if i say talk about synapse If you if you talk about GCP uh, like Bigtable you have right, uh, BigQuery you have, and uh, like similarly all the all the data warehouses which you are using, in fact, mm-hmm. Black, in, in fact the Snowflake and all all these whatever you are using, I think on the background they definitely need the SQL understanding. Okay, so SQL definitely hundred percent it is not going to 
fake out mm-hmm. definitely you will use it because it is it is it was used in past it is going to be used because it cannot be 100% automa- automated okay mm-hmm. so it cannot be nice so that cannot that cannot be possible spark yes if it has use cases and like suppose most of the most of the projects which are interactive work, maybe some of the transformation suppose they are using synapse okay mm. as a data warehouse so maybe they are dealing mostly with the queries which they are currently using as a stored procedures or they have the queries already been uh, scheduled which they which is running but that is one part right second part is when it comes to data quality okay then you have to write, you have to have a mechanism where you can do a customized things on top of your data set what suits your data right mm. you should need to build a framework which basically controls your uh, uh controls your audit balance and control, like abc model right the audit balance and control that is also one example where you use where you need any of the uh, programming language or basically a processing tool to pro- to process your data to maintain the audits whatever you are doing there the location the data you can save it any of the services hmm. that is right but how to filter that data how to harmonize that data how to make your data stabilize that is something which you need spark to process it <clears throat> and i think majority of the majority of the clients are using so spark will not lose its uh, word at least what i can i mean see it world is changing and in next 10 years what will happen we cannot uh guess but i think at least for the upcoming 10 years i don't think spark will lose its uh, focus and and always i what i believe is that uh whatever things can evolve right they evolve from the current things only okay so either if the spark 3.x has come spark 1 has come whatever it had come it has evolved from the issues which were faced in spark 2.x agreed Mm-hmm. if we do not know what issues were faced in spark 2.x we will not realize the worth of spark 3.x right so for that reason you should know you should invest time in spark in getting the understanding about the previous versions or getting the st- getting the understanding and the crux of spark then only you will realize that whatever the new developments are coming new tools are coming how they are built and what is the advantage this tools are giving okay so i think that question is very well answered and uh, in layman terms if we can say um, no matter uh, dslr has the uh, uh, automatic mode but uh, manual mode is always for experts and it will never lose its yes. importance yes yes okay. that's that's a correct example <laughs> okay that's great bandhu and i think uh, i have taken a lot of your valuable time and uh, very thank you to share all these uh, wonderful insights and i believe everyone watching this video uh, will uh, be having a lot of to take away and will help uh, in their career specifically if they are trying to move to big data thank you bandhu uh, it was very nice having you here and we will try uh, if time allows uh, we'll be keep having you on gk code labs and uh, it was very wonderful thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, i think for calling me here and i think it was nice talking to <coughs> all uh, to, to these points so i'll keep uh, looking forward to it okay. thank you so much and all the best to all the listeners sure thanks thanks bandhu